live from the AOC studios deep in the heart of downtown Lafayette, Louisiana. It is fun, it's excitement, it is a somber evening here at AOC. The man you see on your screen right now, Dr. David Craychan, passed away Wednesday. Tonight, we will honor him with this show. Tonight, we will remember, David, here on the beginning of year number eight of 124 East Main. Good evening, Acadiana. And wait, hold on. Something's not quite right here. Oh, that's why, because we had the wrong camera. There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome in to 124 East Main. I am your humble host, Ian Ozan. Uh, why we had that weird effect, I have no idea. But uh, that is, uh, is just goes to show that eight years here on the or seven years, seven full years on the air here at AOC, and we still haven't figured things out. For those of you who are watching online right now, over on Ustream, or I should say listening on Ustream, because we have no uh, video tonight. For, uh, we have some uh, technical glitch there as well which is preventing us from uh, hitting the air um, on the interwebs. But uh, for those of you who are listening on Ustream, thank you for tuning in tonight. For those of you watching right here on AOC, thank you for tuning in as well. Today is June the 20th, 2015. Today begins our eighth year of programming here on 124 East Main. Uh, this past Sunday, if I'm, or no, check that, this past Tuesday, June the 16th, marked the seventh anniversary of our very first show here at AOC. And initially, we were, the, we were going to do a retrospective of that very first show. We were going to show clips from it. Uh, we may, uh, were going to show uh, how much we've grown in uh, more ways than one uh, since we started the show here on AOC some seven years ago, seven years and four days ago. But Tuesday afternoon, got a phone call. And Tuesday night got another phone call. Um, news that I wasn't expecting, news that caught me off guard, and news that affected a lot of people here in Acadiana. Not just those who watch AOC, but also those who have stepped foot on the campus of what is now UL those in the activist community, especially those in the uh, social activism community here in Acadiana, those in the legal community, and those who ever met the man. And again, I'm talking about David Craychan, who you see right here. David passed away Wednesday night, a little bit before midnight, 71, been battling Parkinson's for Lord knows how long, at least 10 years. And despite that, never let it stop him. Continued uh, hosting shows here on AOC. And for those of you who those of you who know of David and those of you who um, had a chance to watch him on the air. Here on the Acadian Open Channel, the, you know he'd been a part of AOC for a very long time. David uh, hosted a plethora of shows here on the Open Channel during his, during his what, almost 15, 16 years of broadcasting on AOC. David uh, started out hosting... I think it was David and David with uh, the late school board member David Thibodeau wound up, uh, and then from there wound up with, uh, teamed up with Daley Barrard doing David and Daley. From there wound up teaming up with John Bess, who you saw just a moment ago in this clip from 10 years ago. This is from May 1st of 2005. Uh, teamed up with John Bess to host in today's black news and that show evolved into voices of african americans which david hosted until he or co-hosted rather till he stepped down in 2007 when health got the the best of him even when he wasn't appearing on tv he still 
was active in media, hosting a, a radio show on KOZZ with John Best, Sunday solo hosting as well uh, on uh, the community station out in Opelousas, again, KOCZ. He did that for a number of years, and even after... Even after he gave up doing TV, and even after he had stopped doing media, he still kept in touch. He was still very much in current events, and we talk on the phone every now and again and discuss politics, both local and national. And uh, I say that because you see here in this clip, this is back in 2006, January of 2006. This is the first time I ever hosted a show on the Acadiana Open Channel. It's unfortunate in the city of Lafayette. And David and I, for full disclosure, we're cousins. He was uh, my grandfather's first cousin. Where people from. Uh, and back as a uh, precocious ten-year-old, I forget what the event was. It was back in the early summer of 1998. David, even within a meeting, and from one meeting, was holding the. It was holding a. And so we have to command. I should say, excuse me, his brother Ivy was holding some sort of reception. I don't remember if it was if it was a baptism or if it was somebody's wedding. I think it may have been David's granddaughter had gotten baptized and Ivy was doing the reception at his place. And David, of course, is on the back porch with my grandfather and a bunch of other men talking politics. I somehow jumped in the middle of it and wound up immersed and somehow jumping in the conversation. Why, as a 10-year-old, they even um, let me, I, I don't know. But that the from that conversation, David uh, David knew that I'd watched AOC. He had, uh, I think he had found out, or maybe I told him that I'd watched AOC, that I knew him from AOC. And he wound up inviting me to go on his show with him. He wound up saying, hey, how would you like to come on AOC? And I think uh, my response differently was uh, at this day I'll day. go on this week in There's wrestling but I'm not going to go on your show or something to that effect and he said no no if you go on AOC you have to come on my show I said nah, can I do the wrestling guys I, I kind of fit in better with them uh, but after some uh, leg pulling and uh, and some coercing uh, in August of 1998 some 17 years ago as a 10-year-old, uh, so I made my first AOC appearance on what was then in today's Black News with John Bess and David Craychan. Fast forward a few months later to January of 99, went back and did another guest spot with them on a Mardi Gras show. They had a band in studio, and, uh, and of course, as a 10-year-old, it's, ooh, you're on TV, you're famous. And that was because David gave me that opportunity and put me on TV and said, hey, come on down, we'll let you do it. We kept in touch over the intervening time in, uh, in 2004, uh, July of 04, my grandfather wound up having to have heart surgery, triple bypass. David came by the house on uh, on the night before the surgery was supposed to happen just to notarize some paperwork just in case something happened uh, in the surgery, uh, notarizing paperwork, and police will, succession, all that stuff. And David had come in early afternoon, do the paperwork, and we started talking again. And lo and behold, he happened to be on the air that night. He said, come to AOC with me. Come do the show. So I went to do the show with him. Uh, my, uh, Mark, my third appearance on AOC is a, uh, as a guest. And again, it was because David said, hey, come on down. You know what you're talking about. Let's have some fun. And from that one appearance, that started doing more work with him, doing cameras, eventually directing uh, shows on AOC. As a matter of fact, the the clip we showed you earlier, the the clip of uh, David and John interviewing Don Cravens, which you see right here from uh, 2005, that show was my first opportunity to direct a show here on AOC. Back in the old uh, in the old building at 124 East Main, and again that was because David put his put his faith and put his trust in me to handle his show. And I guess the long story that I'm getting to here is, at least 
Well, for me, of course, is a relative. That David was close, but you have the majority. That's right. David no, you, put the bug you, not, not, not in me. Put the TV bug in. Jumping ground for golf courses. And you come and visit and go back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. That one experience in 1998, when mm -hmm. it snowballed you know, to that, that's a good point. more opportunities on AOC, and snowballed into becoming his camera guy, becoming his director, becoming his part-time fill-in co-host. If it weren't for David, I wouldn't be here on AOC. I don't know if I'd be working in TV full time. In the Daily Advertiser, the Without David, there sure as hell wouldn't be a 124 News name. But thanks a lot, Dr. Williams, and I'll see you next week. Without David, there wouldn't be a lot of people here at the Acadia Open Channel. Thanks, Shelby, for his comments. He was one of the first advocates and one of the first people to really push AOC in the community. Certain people are treated not just through his work here, but also in the community through informing people about us, through letting people know that this place existed in our city and through giving it some good pub wherever he went outside in different communities would be uh, basically treated it is for that reason uh, at council that I thank David rules constantly change. and I appreciate uh, constant change him putting me in this spot let's go to the phone lines call you live on 124 East Main good evening hey, hey. Uh, and so What's up? We have to I'm going to let you know you've got some feedback, in feedback coming into your show. Years, feedback coming in. Yeah. Because, That's weird. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't know why that is. What kind of feedback is it? It sounds like um, that was made by Joy Durrell, from I, the shows and, you were and, showing. You know, I would like to also ask nah, that, that may, he talking about? Let's see. Oh, he was misquoted. He it shouldn't be. be. That, that certainly uh, isn't it. And, and uh, I don't. From the, uh, that's why, because you know, and you're probably exactly hearing the audio from those uh, shows coming yeah. in. I forgot to turn yeah. the audio down. Okay. I got a question for you. Yeah. This is about WWE. Uh, not that Mary. Tonight's yeah. not the tonight's not the night to do WWE. I'm, I'm doing a tribute to, to David. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hate doing that, Mary. I I hate doing that, but not tonight. Not tonight. Next week, we'll go back to our normal format. Next week, we'll, we'll talk WWE, we'll talk sports, we'll talk everything else. Tonight's not the night. David Cracham, for those who didn't know him, for those of you who never met him, for those of you who may have only seen him here on AOC, a kind soul, a gentle man, an outstanding person, and maybe one of the most brilliant people that you'd ever know. And David, I, until you really got to know him, or unless you really knew him, you wouldn't think of, and I, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, David never was one to brag about his accomplishments, was never one to brag about what he had done, what he was doing in the community, and what he did to help this city and this region grow. And I really didn't know everything or a lot about him until very recently. Of course I knew he was a professor at UL. I had no idea that he was a, an engineering major, an electrical engineering major at UL, then USL, before deciding to go to law school. I had no idea that he was the faculty, what's the word I'm looking for, the faculty advisor, there we go, for the USL NAACP, that he was the president of an organization of minority professors, minority university professors, I forget the name of the organization, it'll come to me later on. I had no idea that he was a respected scholar who traveled around presenting papers, giving speeches on a number of issues. 
I had no idea that he was as involved in academia, but also in everyday life in Lafayette and St. Landry parishes as he was. David was an unassuming person. He, he didn't tell you that he was doing everything he was doing. You had an idea, if, you, if ever you went to his house or ever you talked to him, you had an idea of his brilliance. The man could discuss the finer point of the law and the politics with you for hours on end. At his home, his office, had all of his legal books, all of his various... Uh, his law library, every, it was all in his house, and I walked in. I'll never forget one day, I, I did a show with him, in the, his radio show with him in Opelousas, and was at his place, was looking through his office and just amazed that, that he still kept his, that he had his law library all that time and that he, and that he still put it to use every now and again. I was amazed later on to find out that he was that he worked as a public defender that he that when he did practice full time gave his career and put his talents to use to help those who otherwise wouldn't have had any kind of representation. David in all he did put others before himself. And I guess that's the legacy that he leaves us. And I guess if we look back at his life, that's one thing we can take from it and we can be reminded of. Is that during his time in this mortal coil, he used his abilities to give a leg up, to give a hand up, and a lift up to those who needed it and to those who asked him for it. As I mentioned earlier, I am completely indebted to David for allowing me as a child, as a 10-year-old, some 17 years ago, August will be 17 years of that very first show, of allowing me to come in, be precocious, and play television, and be the guest and be the star for that one night. If it weren't for that, I don't know if the TV bug really would have been bit, or if the TV bug really would have bitten me. I don't know if, again, the, I have no idea where I would be now, had it not been for that one night and everything that happened after that. I don't know where I'd be if it weren't for the night you see here, May 1st, 2005. Had I not been in the director's booth that night, maybe I wouldn't have ventured behind the scenes. Maybe I wouldn't have explored working off camera. This show and David, my extension, helped show me that I, that I could make it. I don't know, and if... And I know for certain, if it weren't for this show right here, if it weren't for David on this particular evening in 2006, when John Best was caught in traffic coming back from New Orleans, where David said, Ian, you've been on TV before, come on in, you can host this show. You can keep the train on the tracks. If it weren't for this show, 
if it weren't for this night, I can tell you there wouldn't be 124 East Main on the air right now. This show premiered a year or two and a half years after this episode aired. And it's because David said, come on in. Come sit down with me. I want you on my show. That all of this was possible. I'm sure there's someone out there tonight. I'm sure there's someone somewhere in Acadiana that had a similar experience with David. Someone that touched his life, or someone that, someone whose life he touched. Someone who he inspired along the way to pursue their dream and their chosen path. I, I would like to think I speak for all of them when I say thank you, David Craychan. Thank you for giving us the tools and giving us the belief that we could that we could do this show, that we could carry on and do whatever it is that we aspired to do It's hard to believe, it still hasn't set in yet that David's gone, but I know that he's now free from suffering, and I know that he is, that he's in a better place right now. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Caller! You're, oh, caller rejected. Uh, I'm sure I missed the, the button. The, the call will come back in in just a few moments. 337-366-8951 is the phone number. Caller, you're live on 124 East Main. Good evening. Hello, Ian. It's Bert. Good That's evening, Bert. How are you, sir? I'm so sorry for your loss, man. Thank you. I'm so sorry for what happened to David. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, was he ever a guest on uh, 124 East Main? He was not. When we started the show, by the time we started the show, he was doing strictly radio. He had stopped uh, doing. He had stopped doing TV by that point. But uh, no, he had. I think he may have called the show once before. Okay. He may have. He may have called in. He may have uh, loaned his voice to this program, but he never appeared on air here. He, uh, he's, much to my regret, he never appeared on the, on the show. I, like I said, I think by the time 2008 rolled around, he was doing exclusive, exclusively radio, and even then, at that point, he had cut back. And I'm, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because it brings up another story of how active he was uh, until, uh, until, his, uh, until Parkinson's kind of robbed him of of his ability to keep going. Uh, 2008, he called me and said, Hey, Ian, I know you're still in town. You haven't gone back to New Jersey yet. Uh, I'm going to Plaisance to film the, the Zodico Festival. Come with me. And he had called me about a week out. And I said, Okay, sure, I'm going to come with you. We'll, uh, we'll go out there. Uh, we Saturday morning of is when we find out Hurricane Gustav is bearing down on us. Mm -hmm. So we go to Plaisance. We get to the... We get to the Zodico Festival relatively early, and uh, Bert, hold the line just a second. Someone's ringing the doorbell. Hold on just a second. We'll be right back, folks. Hold on just a second. All righty.
All right, Bert, I'm back. Sorry about that. Go ahead, John. Pull up a chair. You can come on in here. I may have to adjust the camera in just a second. You can slide on in. But uh, going back to the story, uh, David and I and his wife, Doris, went to Plaisos for the Zydeco Festival. And needless to say, because it's the day that Hurricane Gustav is bearing down on us, there's nobody there. Of course, the politicians from St. Landry Parish who were looking for votes are there. Both candidates for district attorney showed up. There was, I think, a parish president candidate and a couple of other people. But otherwise, there wasn't much of anybody there. So we get some footage. And, or no, check that. He was registering people to vote. That was a presidential election year. He's there to register people to vote. I'm around walking around just checking out the scenery and thinking, dear Lord, people are getting ready for a hurricane and we're here. <laughs> and we drive back, we get back to Lafayette in time to hear Joey Durrell say, prepare for the worst. <laughs> and, we, and we had a good laugh about that and we talked and after the hurricane was done, we talked about, okay, what's going to happen now to Zotico Fest? Are they going to reschedule? Are they going to redo it? Turns out they didn't. That was the last great road trip I had with David. And we're doing the Zotico Festival while on hurricane watch so that was that was the thing with david hell or high water literally what nothing was gonna he was gonna do it regardless uh so it was back in lord it's hard to believe that's already seven years it was 2008 august of 08 that we went to plays on so we made and we made that run but uh yeah he was still active until until he couldn't until he couldn't go anymore and even then and the, and the thing that i think pains me the most about seeing David, and I think John can attest to this, is even at the end, you knew he, his mental faculties were still there. Yes. It, yes. You, but it hurt to see that he couldn't express what he was feeling and what he was thinking. True. True. And, that was, and that always was, was for me anyway, was the, was, the worst, it was the worst part of it, is you knew, you knew that if he could, he would be shouting right now at the TV. Right. Over certain events that are going on in uh, in the United States, but that's that. I appreciate the phone call, Bert. Thanks for checking in. You're welcome. All right. uh, bye bye. bye. And with that, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna have to go ahead and adjust the camera, okay. or better yet, right. if you can slide on in here. Let's act like we like each other. John. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're John right. Best joining us here on uh, on 124 East Main this evening, and John, um, this is the first time in a long time you've been on the show. Oh, yeah. And no, actually, this is the first time you've been on the show. I've been on uh, Voices many times. This is the first time you've been here, and I, I wish it could be on better uh, in better circumstances. But um, as we mentioned uh, earlier, you and John, or uh, you and David, uh, co-hosted uh, Voices of African Americans, and before that, in today's Black mm -hmm. News for Lord, you guys hosted the show what ten years together? Oh yeah, almost? ten years, definitely ten years. Um, the thing about David, and David and I also uh, co-hosted a uh, radio program in uh, Opelousas for yep. about six years. Uh, David always had uh, the opinion that uh, we should uh, have a voice within our community, and he helped form that voice. He helped mentor a lot of uh, youth, and he really is the forerunner of African-American programming at this uh, station here and he helped everybody not just african-americans but he started and mentored african-american programming i have had a uh, our program a community affairs program called meet with lab mm -hmm. that david helped me with and then uh, minister lyle muhammad and i had in today's black news david assisted with and then david asked me and i proudly accepted to uh, co-host uh, with him on voices of african-americans and I had a, he was a font of wisdom and knowledge and his uh, spirit. As you can see, uh, as Ian is playing some of the old uh, clips, he had a great sense of humor, which I loved uh, about him. And on Friday, going to Opelousas, uh at the end of a hard school day, tackling some of the challenging uh, uh, topics and people that you deal with in education. I look forward to that hour with him on radio talking about local affairs. And we were uh, j uh, jokingly called the two angry uh, men <laughs> from, from Lafayette by, uh, and I won't mention her name, but uh, it was just in jest. But uh, we covered all the topics that David didn't run from any, didn't step back from any, and so he was a model there. Get the facts and put them out there. Don't be afraid. Uh, to say what it is you think and don't be afraid to push your community's agenda. Don't have anybody formulate and push it uh, for you. So, 
for that. Uh, I'm grateful uh, for him, and yeah. he is greatly uh, missed. He was my co-host, uh, my buddy. We always uh, used to refer to each other as comrades. You know, we we uh, had a military background yep. uh, together. So I mean, just a great loss. Uh, all those years, you know, uh, I consider this program. He was the forerunner of Voices, which has been on for 21 years. Wow! Uh, and it, before that, David did it uh, several years uh, before by himself. He also had Dave and Daly, the left and mm -hmm. right uh, perspective. And David lady. Thibodeau before that. And David Thibodeau before that. So David tried to cover all perspectives. He, you can't pigeonhole uh, David. And so that was the good thing about him. He wanted all perspectives out there, but he unapologetically pushed issues that others uh, sought to sweep under the uh, rug. So again, that. I was uh, really inspired by that part of him. Now, tell me a little bit about how you wound up meeting David and how you wound up. Was it here at AOC? And it, it actually uh, was here at uh, AOC. I knew uh, Doris. Doris was known as the coolest dean on UL's campus. Yep. So I knew Doris uh, a little bit before uh, David. Uh, we came over here. We did, uh, when I was in mass communications at then USL, we did a news program every uh, Friday. And so I came over here, we did the news uh, program, and then uh, I, I was kind of um, thinking about uh, formulating a program, and, and David was around, and I noticed that David at the time was the only uh, uh, African American into a program. So I just carefully observed, and we got to talking. We became uh, friends, and I saw his mentoring uh, approach and the helpful approach with others. And so we just it became a uh, 20 five-year uh, friendship. And from the, from USL, you two wound up uh, being here. Talk a little about off the air, what he was like. I tried explaining it earlier, but I don't know if I did him justice. Talk about David off the air, behind uh, the scenes, and, and who he was. And, and that's, uh, that's such a great uh, question, because off the air, it was even more David. He was even more <laughs> animated. Uh, he uh, had a, a million and one uh, stories. He had an encyclopedic memory uh, politically and socially of things that had happened uh, in the past. So I just sat in his audience, you know, just, just soaking that up as he related uh, some of these uh, instances to me. Uh, and his deep humanity uh, came out. Someone who actually truly uh, was concerned. We have a lot of pretenders, uh, dare I say, in the community. And uh, as one man said, when people say community, you know, you want to run from them if they yeah. talk about for the community. But David truly was for the community. He had a, 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 a giant heart. He had a great uh, uh, intellectual as well as common touch uh, presence. He could relate to anyone and did relate to uh, anyone. So I would miss that jovial quality uh, about him as well as the academic quality as well yeah. as his um, being a, uh, uh, a giant as it relates to uh, political societal affairs. He set up a, a mentorship. He talked to many uh, youth, David and I, uh, had a segment of our program devoted to the youth, and we still uh, have the Femme de Mode, and we have Boy Scouts, and we have others. That started with David, uh, thinking about the next generation of leadership and what we need to be doing and getting them ready, encouraging them, enriching them, you know, placing them with individuals who can uh, assist them, whereby when we old dogs, or old heads, as uh, he and I would say, are gone from the scene. We have that new generation just can step forward. So he was all about that. So uh, the jovial quality of him, the fact that he could uh, lift you with his um, uh, wonderful observations about what's happening in the community and in the world, and some of the, his off-color phrases, which I can't mention on AOC. Which sometimes, <laughs> and, the, and the funny thing was, you say that, is David, for as great of a talker as he was, the bad part that came of it, sometimes he forgot to bite his tongue. Yeah. And sometimes those off-color remarks went on air, and a couple yeah. of times they did. That is true, yes. With both of us <laughs> on the other side of them. Yeah. And, and his response typically would be, uh, up. <laughs> yep, well, exactly. No, it happened. Yeah, no, it can't go back. Same thing on radio as well as uh, uh, TV. On mm -hmm. uh, radio, we were... Um, given a brief uh, suspension uh, twice, <laughs> in our, twice in our six years. Only twice. Only twice. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, as you know, there's the FCC rec, uh, you know, uh, regulations that one has to adhere to. But uh, when you get wound up, again, David, he let it uh, fly. Uh, he didn't back down and uh, you know, let the chips fall where they uh, may. So. Exactly. And we, looking at this clip here, this is back in, what, 2005, I believe. Uh, yeah, this is May of 2005. Okay. This is you. This is David. Uh, then uh, District 40 representative Don Cravens, Jr. Mm -hmm. And looking at, the, at this clip, and whenever you guys did interviews, whether it was with, whether it was with a, a politician, whether it was with the average Joe, a musician, or even children, as you mentioned, because I remember coming in and, and helping you guys with some of the uh, cotillions yeah. and, and various other organizations that, uh, that would pass through. He was always at ease with everyone and That's always it. at ease That's talking true. to ease. anyone. Exactly. Very, very uh, comfortable, a level of uh, comfort. Uh, someone who, uh, one of the things that uh, also uh, was dear about him was the uh, educational aspect, constantly uh, pushing uh, education in every format uh, possible. Uh, and having uh, the youth who come here who perhaps aren't focused as much as they should be educationally, uh, focusing them. Being able to uh, focus their minds there, constantly uh, pushing that and tying in with them in the talks that uh, I saw him have, tying in education, how it will form their lives and the community's lives and what 5, 10, 20 years will be like uh, from uh, henceforth. And so a lot of uh, our youth can't see tomorrow, let alone 5, 10, 20 years, and so he got them to that long-term strategizing and thinking about how they want their lives to turn out and what they must be doing now to nurture their lives. So uh, we've lost a truly uh, great uh, mentor within our community and the likes of David, you know, we don't see them around uh, much. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would just say uh, to everyone who wishes to pay uh, homage uh, uh, to David, uh, you know, get out there and mentor yourself push your education, uh, don't be afraid to uh, speak truth to power, don't bite your tongue, don't do as my former uh, landlord A. Ross Mouton said, throw rocks from behind trees, step from behind that tree and be counted. And that was uh, most important, uh, David sought to have uh, people counted, those who are downtrodden, those without a voice to have them uh, count. and. Uh, to uh, open the dialogue, open the uh, framework. There are so many issues that are happening now on the local, state, and national scene that were David here, you know, he would have a, just a blazing commentary uh, on that. The work continues. We need uh, giants and educators and motivators such as David now, even more so than we did in the past. Uh, we still are not quite where we need to be. We're not uh, post-racial. We have a class uh, issue in America, not quite to the level of England, but darn near close at times. And so we need to work to eradicate those and make this a more just and burdened society, mm -hmm. as NPR says. And David uh, certainly uh, tried to do that. And I can't name five people on one hand off the top of my head who are doing that and trying to do that. It just takes one, and uh, that was also uh, in uh, something that he stressed. It takes one. You don't have to have a group. Right. You don't have to have everybody. You don't have to have people agreeing with you. It just takes one. There's a power in one. Exactly. Yeah. And that was and that was the remarkable thing. You talked about it. Such a great motivator, mm -hmm. and getting people to step out of their comfort zone, as it, as it were, mm -hmm. and to fight the good fight, whatever that fight for them was. And you hit the nail on the head. I, I wish he could be here with what's going on now in Charleston, which um, we will, for those of you who are watching tonight, we will get to Charleston next week. We will, we're, we will discuss all of this next week uh, here on the show. But I, this is one of those nights in the last, I guess, 18 months with what's going on with, the, with Baltimore, with Ferguson, mm -hmm. with Charleston, and uh, the various other incidents. It, and speak, I just wish we could hear his voice one more oh, time on all on those issues. Criminal justice reform was one of his major issues. Okay. One, the prison industrial complex, a major issue on radio, television, that he talked about uh, constantly. Uh, and so uh, the 
prison industrial complex, you know, just growing uh, larger, larger. We dialogued about what's happening on Wall Street uh, with it. Uh, some of the reforms uh, that need to happen that uh, haven't uh, happening as putting more rehabilitative programs such as uh, educational uh, programs, training programs into prison. As we know, Angola has a lot of programs. I took my children, uh, my students there uh, the last couple of years. They have uh, 12, 14 uh, programs. But in uh, the medium security prison, not much of anything. Really? So you had a recidivist rate that is about 77%. And they go in without training, without education, come out without training, without education. So it's a revolving door. And David, he must have used that term a thousand oh, times, God. revolving door. I think, that was his, I think that was his favorite term. Yeah. I think he used that line more so than any other one. We got a message on Facebook, I think, about the show. I'm trying to check it, so okay. bear right. with me. For, uh, okay. bear, and my mama, and the weird thing is, all this time after, I mentioned earlier, 17 years, mm -hmm. the first, 17 years ago was the first time that I appeared on in today's Black News mm -hmm. with you and David, and been doing this show now that we're beginning mm -hmm. our eighth year. Mm -hmm. And my mom is on the eighth anniversary of starting this show. She's still texting, or the seventh anniversary of, the, of our first show, she's texting me the same thing she texted me, or she told me after that first appearance 17 years ago, don't be so stiff. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that advice. <laughs> I'm sure but, David right now is laughing somewhere. <laughs> but but uh, quite frankly, myself, Minister Lyle, and David, we thought this young man uh, was a genius. He was one of the most brilliant young men we have seen come through here. And what astounded us is the incredible energy, and, he, and Ian had focus. A lot of youth, they have energy, they have intelligence, but they're not focused. So he had the great There would be a lot of people who would disagree <laughs> with you on that point. But we always said, we know he's going uh, someplace, and of course he went to the uh, Ivy League. I don't know many youth who uh, left Louisiana and went to the Ivy League and uh, became uh, successful, but he was successful. We knew it then. We, we talked about his uh, prospects uh, then, and uh, it was just wonderful uh, to have Ian around here. The energy of any three people <laughs> he has. Well, in, in the last few years, we put on enough weight for three yeah. people. But, uh, but for those of you, if you're watching out here, of course, John Best joining us uh, midway through the show, fresh off a plane from San Francisco, That's by the right. Way. So you might think I'm overdressed. I apologize. But in San you're Francisco. You're bringing a touch of class to the show. <laughs> yeah. That's a, Thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. 52 degrees, uh, 20 uh, <laughs> mile per hour winds, it gets a mic chill. Really, yeah. And for those of you, and again, uh, as you see on the bottom of your screen tonight, we're remembering our good friend, our, our broadcast partner, David Krejcian, who passed away Wednesday night, age of 71. We're remembering him. If you have your remembrances, you want to get on the air, the phone lines are open. 366-8951 is the phone number. Uh, operator sitting by waiting to take your call. Feel free to, to call in, and to, while we have the opportunity, uh, funeral arrangements have been set. Uh, Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. is when the wake begins. It'll be at Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church, uh, 12th Street here in Lafayette. Funeral begins at 11 a.m. will be in the church. Interment will follow in the mausoleum next door to the church. Uh, again, if you knew David, or even if you were with, if you knew David, you knew of him, you want to pay your respects, come on down, I'm sure. Uh, Doris and, the, and his immediate family would be happy to see you there. Um, and again, we've said it once, we've said it a million times, a tremendous loss for our community in, uh, in David's passing. And, it's, and Ed Bowie touched on it the Thursday night at the Video Awards. And, and you hit on it earlier. David was one of the pioneer, pioneers here at AOC, even before live TV, oh, yes. doing uh, some tape programming and oh. bringing in uh, both a legal perspective and also the perspective of someone who grew up in pre-civil rights America mm -hmm. as, a, as mm -hmm. a, a black man. That's and right. David, uh, David made a point of using his experience, his life experience, both as a person, as a military, uh, as a military man, and as a, as a lawyer, an academic, to help those who may not have had a fair shake and help those who otherwise wouldn't have had a shot. As we talked about earlier, early in his legal career, volunteered, mm -hmm. went, to, gave up any opportunity of having a lucrative, a lucrative uh, solo practice mm -hmm. and went to work as a, as a public defender. I, I don't remember if it was Calcasieu Parish or where it was, but he worked as a public defender in the western portion of the state. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, 
just work to help other people. That's right. And uh, uh, a story was related to me where he was uh, arrested trying to register uh, people to vote. Back in those days, and we're talking several decades back, uh, 45, 50 years back, you could be arrested if you were trying to uh, register in African Americans uh, to vote. So uh, I think he was on the uh, courthouse steps as the um, as the show goes, and uh, he was uh, ushered away. So uh, David didn't just talk it. He, he got it. out there and did it. He walked it. He got out there and did it. And and now again, those same fights are upon us in a more sophisticated uh, way with voter uh, suppression. You know, uh, ending early uh, voting, the ID controversy, and, and all these other. We thought we had solved these uh, issues as it relates to uh, voting, uh, but we haven't. The more things change, the more they uh, stay the same. So, in a more sophisticated method, we still have efforts, uh, mass efforts, uh, behind the scenes and openly at voter suppression. So, uh, the fight goes on. And again, if you want to honor David, uh, join the fight. Uh, no time to be silent. Just like uh, you weren't silent, uh, our uh, fathers, forefathers weren't silent 40, 50, 60 years ago during the civil rights struggle. No time to be silent now. Yeah. And if you're in your comfort zone, understand this. As it has been shown nationwide, there's no comfort zone to be had. As goes your neighbor, goes you. So pick up the baton and, and push forward uh, as well. So David again left a giant legacy to the uh, youth. He modeled what he spoke, which is important. He got out there and did it. He was active. Uh, he was engaged. And you have to be a participatory part of society, of government, uh, your basic duty of uh, voting, your basic duty ensuring the rights of uh, yourself and others. Um, you, you just have to get involved. And he and I talked about uh, and, and decried the deplorable voting uh, records mm -hmm. of African Americans. Uh, there were certain elections that would come by, we would have the candidates on and you see uh, yep. uh, uh, Senator Cravens, former Senator Cravens uh, on. And yet, I mean, we're talking uh, in the African American community uh, in with some elections, 18 percent, 20 percent, 22 percent. And this is of eligible voters. In other words, people who are on the rolls, not people who could be on the rolls and who just don't want to have never signed up, have yep. never taken part They're in the election. Kind of we're talking about the people who are actually signed up, only 18, 22 percent of them in some elections. Uh, vote, and we're talking about not just one, two. We're talking about numerous elections, unless it's a presidential election or election for governor. Uh, but some of the smaller elections, no, they don't participate. So again, activism is what David uh, pushed. What he was for. That's what we need. Activism is no time to be silent. As a matter of fact, if I wrote a book, that would be the title. No time to be silent. We've got about five minutes left in the show. Uh, is there any one particular story or one? one memory of David that sticks out above all? Is there one thing that you can, when somebody says David Krejcian, first thing that comes to your mind? The first thing that comes to my mind uh, is that hearty laugh that I've heard and, and now I'm remembering it over and over and when he would receive, we would receive certain uh, callers that David and I knew and that hearty laugh that would go on, it's, it would seem two, three minutes even though it would only be 15, 20 seconds. And uh, I remember that, that, that big personality, that, 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 that laugh and, and how that mirthful joy came, you know, uh, across him and it permeated the voices of African American uh, stage when those issues uh, came out. So uh, while David could be very serious and was a serious uh, man, he also had a great uh, joy uh, within his heart as well. So he, certainly, he certainly did. And again, off the air and off camera, even and around other people, the one thing that I remember is how comfortable he was talking to anybody, whether it was mm -hmm. one of his peers, one of his relatives, or even a 10-year-old kid who mm -hmm. shouldn't have been holding court with him. It, uh, it, it's still just, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to believe he's not, he's not with us. True. And, and I do uh, recall one memory that will uh, stick with me. Uh, after 9-11, I was called out of the classroom. I went to Kuwait and in uh, Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, David and uh, you know he vi uh, frequently visited uh, 
Vegas on occasion. So uh, he came out to the base and he interviewed myself and my um, uh, uh, captain about uh, you know how things were going, how we felt. And he made a uh, video and he uh, presented it on uh, Voices of African Americans. And I, I thought that was that was very good of him. In a That's time right. when yeah, in a time when we were working 14 hour shifts six hours a day. It was great to see a friendly face. So the captain was nice enough to be interviewed and allowed David to uh, interview me uh, as well at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. So I re will always remember that. Yeah. And thank you, Dave. I needed that after, at the end of a back-breaking day. <laughs> and the best part is, and I, I knew I had tapes when I went home. I didn't realize I had, as, I had two full episodes of this. And Hopefully we'll get them transferred here at AOC. We're in the oh, process definitely. of transferring all of definitely. the old clips. I know there are a lot more over the old oh, yes. building if the rats haven't gotten to them yet. And this is, it's, it's great to see and to be able to see David in his, in his prime and to be able to go back and look at these old clips and be able to, oop, that was a bad jump cut, uh, <laughs> but to be able to see all of it, to see, to be able to relive Exactly. What, uh, exactly. what he was, who he was, mm -hmm. it's still difficult to speak about him in yeah. the past tense, but to, but to go back and watch these clips and to hear that hearty laugh, oh, yeah. to hear that voice yeah. again, to hear him discuss whatever, uh, and not be afraid to tick off a politician. Exactly. And what exactly. Knows exactly. That's it. Exactly. exactly. It nice. is just amazing that... Uh, it, to be able to go back and watch all of the all of his old clips and to know that he he lives on both on tape and and in our hearts and in our minds exactly. and he exactly. is he truly is a legend and it's a it's hard to, it's difficult to see him go again funeral will be Tuesday morning eleven o'clock over to Macklin Hart here in Lafayette the wake will begin at eight o'clock in uh, at Macklin Hart as well caller we've got about two minutes you're the last call go ahead thank you. Go ahead, caller. It's you. Hi, Ian. Hey, I'm John. Yes, hello. Th this is Pam Matthew. I'm hey, Pam. David's niece. Hey, Pam. Hi. How are you guys? Doing, doing well. well. Doing well. Good. Thank. I want to thank you both for hosting the show tonight and honoring Uncle David with it. That's well, the least we could do. Definitely. Oh, uh, much appreciated. And I wanted to let you know that, uh, and your viewers know that Uncle David was. Also a very loving and caring family man. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Devoted. And I wanted to say, too, to you that your caller, Mary, who called earlier, uh -huh. and she was mentioning the wrestling. Uh -huh. if, you don't, if you don't know David personally, he loved wrestling. He did, that was <laughs> the one <laughs> thing about him. may have been divine intervention. That was the, that was the <laughs> one thing about David that he never let on to me and he knew how big of a wrestling fan i was mm -hmm. and that was something i never knew about him because i never he, knew either because he okay. always razzed me about being a wrestling exactly. fan i never knew that <laughs> really he he was he, we, i remember him hosting when they had the pay-per-view events we'd go to his house and <laughs> <laughs> it was it was nice it, we, we enjoyed it and he we he made me promise we have, um, the Cray Chan family has a Christmas party every year. Yep. And um, every year he, he pro makes us promise, you know, do it again. Do it again next year because as the family is getting older uh -huh. and moving further away, it's more difficult. But every year we do it, and we do it in his honor. Awesome. That's amazing. Pam, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. And All right. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry we couldn't talk to you under better circumstances, but we'll see you Tuesday That's morning. Okay. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. All right. God bless. God bless. Good night. And with that, that'll do it for us. Uh, John, thank you for uh, oh, checking yeah, in. Course. Thank you all for watching. David, we love you. We miss you. We'll, see you. we'll see you back here Saturday night, folks. Good night.